What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Mm-hmm. Why do you sound so nervous? Nervous? Or just resigned, I guess. <laughs> resigned, I think, is better. Uh-huh. Because today we're looking at Human Centipede. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to review Human Centipede. Uh, review that I don't think anyone asked for. Nope. But Just like this movie. Well, okay, because it's come up on the podcast before, and if if you listen to the podcast or if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I like Human Centipede. I think it's good that she does, and so I'm I'm here to to defend its honor, and its honor, <laughs> Human Centipede's honor. I, yeah, its virtue. Yeah. Exactly. I'm gonna yeah, I'll white knight for human centipede. Uh so we watched this together a couple days ago and we haven't talked about it. Nope. It was silence after we turned it off. Which I think <laughs> is the experience for many people that watch this is you watch it, you turn it off and then you never talk about it. But we we specifically didn't talk about it because we wanted to save our discussion for the episode. So it's been kind of hanging like a cloud over our relationship <laughs> the past couple of days. Cause I've been dying to talk about this with you. And prior to this viewing for this review, I had seen the movie more recently than I you. saw it a while. I saw it maybe the year after it came out. Okay. And I had seen it for the first time and only time uh, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Both of us saw this movie on our own. And had different opinions. I was curious, do you still like it? Yeah. Okay. I do. And I don't. <laughs> Which is fitting with the Rotten Tomatoes score of 49% slash... Oh, yeah. I think 50%. it's 50 now. Yeah. yeah so when you Google it, it's 50. 50% of the people yeah. in this podcast approve of this movie. Yeah. And the other half is right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I it's... don't even know where to start with it, really. Well... <laughs> Sorry, I still have a bit of a cough. It's fucking allergy season, man. It's bad this year. It's real bad this year. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone's heard of this movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, so this this came out in 2009, and I think people who don't know horror, everyone knows, everyone knows this movie. It became such a, just the, I think the concept alone drove it to such infamy. Yeah, especially because it has a fun safe for work illustration yes and that gets used all the time in memes and stuff mm-hmm. and that that spreads everywhere the yeah. little the little crudely draw uh yeah his from his, his uh overhead of, slideshow that he the doctor does when he's explaining his surgery yes the very scientific diagram showing it is. the uh uh Medically accurate, according to director and writer Tom Six. According to that guy. Well, yep. he he uh, apparently consulted with a doctor mm-hmm. in Holland, and they sat down together and worked out as much as it would be possible, which it's really not, but like as much as it could be possible, here's how you would do it. Another doctor, after its release, said that was bullshit. Fine, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> that doesn't affect just, my... How would that third person survive just eating double down but shit they don't. all the time. She dies. She literally She dies from uh her an infection probably cuz the... there all kinds of poop got in it. Yeah, a lot of poop. Here's the fun fact about human centipede. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, this might surprise you. There's no poop in this movie. There's no visible poop in right, this. Right, but there is no like you don't see any poop. No, but there's a poop scene. There is. With noises and <laughs> disgust. Uh-huh. Disgusted faces and Doctor Heiter yelling, "Feed her!" <laughs> but yeah, there is no poop in Human Centipede, and no I, visible poop. I feel like we should stress. No okay, visible yes, no poop. visible feces. In- <laughs> well, saying there's no poop is like there's clearly a scene centered around I, poop. Yes. Okay, fine. Our <laughs> definitions of no poop are different. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but I I think that's maybe why I. I feel a little defensive of this movie and why I enjoy it is because the reputation that this movie got, I think for many people, 
like kind of name dropping this movie. It's like the ultimate gross out, right? Mm -hmm. If you asked people in general, if you Family Feud style surveyed 100 people and you asked what's the grossest movie of all time, I would say a lot of them would say Human Centipede. We would do so poorly at that question because we'd be saying shit like Solo. Solo! And they'd be like, what, what is, is that? that? On the board? No one said Solo, that. Solo, big inspiration for this. Yeah. That's a movie neither of us have seen. So I've Oh, you have seen it? Yeah. Oh, I thought you hadn't. I've seen I don't think I've seen the whole thing. Seen a highlight reel? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to find a highlight reel of the sequels to Human Centipede. See, I haven't seen the sequels. Yeah, and I I read them though. I read the I, Wikipedia. I also entries. went and spoiled myself. They're both super meta. That third one sounds real bad. Yeah, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, so so we're gonna we're gonna just stick to discussing the first movie yes. because neither of us have seen the sequels but I have I know what happens in them I've spoiled myself on them and those are two that I would put into the category of maybe like too much for me uh, yeah you know? I mean I'll probably try to watch them at some point I but just probably reading will the too. description I'm like uh. I don't see myself being so uh I, I don't see myself being as on their side as I am with this one. We'll see. And I think reading about the descriptions of the acts in those sequels kind of reframes my opinion sure, of okay. this movie. That's fair. Yeah. Because like after reading what happens in those, which sounds like a lot of uh, sexual, sexual violence. violence. Yes. And, and, and that's what I, again, kind of going uh, back to what I was saying earlier is, is, the idea of the first human centipede, at least as a gross out movie mm -hmm. is not entire. Like, yes, the central conceit of human centipede is disgusting. That's the point. Yes. But and okay. In case anyone, uh, is it somehow, somehow missed, it, missed this you were in pop culture. During, yeah. It involves three human beings who their ligaments from their knees are, uh, are severed. So they, they, they can't stand up. They, they, can't have, stand, to they crawl. have to crawl. And then it's, uh, surgically attaching, the person's mouth to anus yeah. and mouth to anus so uh -huh. that the lead person eats and then it just goes through the whole digestive track, uh, presumably getting to the third person. Yep. Okay. That's a human centipede. That's the human centipede. That's the recipe for human centipede. Mm -hmm. But I think the first mu movie's reputation, mostly by, I think, people who've never seen it, they just know of it. It's in the zeitgeist, you know, is, is as a super gross um, like exploitation, like just ho like horrifically visually disgusting movie but you don't see that like it's it's very for as restrained as human centipede can be i think it has a lot of restraint i don't ag i agree to a certain point uh -huh. but then i think of how for instance saw is that same kind of situation where that first saw movie isn't that explicit right. mm-hmm I don't think this is quite as much like Saw, whereas Saw, you really think that first one is like torture porn, super gory, and you watch it and you're like, no, not really, not at all. This is like, oh, you really think it's gross, and then you watch it, and I still think it was pretty gross. Maybe not as gross as its reputation, but there are shot. There are like, especially when they're climbing up the stairs, those close-up shots of Ooh, like yeah, blood there. coming out as they're like getting torn apart a little bit. Yeah, that I was like, no, I was hoping this would be a saw situation where it's like, uh, oh, there's okay, not anything I see. bad. But I see. But I I think conversely, so I think maybe part of the reason that I, I like this, and I apologize if we're all over the map on this we one, because I have so much, because this is our first discussion we're having about it, having yeah. just seen it. Um, I think maybe a reason I, I like it is the way that I don't feel it's exploitive of its actors, yes. particularly the two women mm -hmm. in the cast. Um, I think I think this movie like weirdly is very delicate with the two women in it. It is. And I, I appreciate, and again, it's why I, I, having read what happens in the sequels, I'm not as interested in them. There's no sexual violence in this first one. There's not. And I think if, if Human Centipede was the movie that everyone maybe thinks it is or fears it to be, that there would be. Be, or yeah. at least some more um, sexual framing of these two female characters. So the two, the two women in it are two maybe like college age girls they, who yeah the we, actresses were I think twenty four and twenty five yeah I think they're playing college mm -hmm. students on spring break maybe they're sure. 
uh, on spring break in Germany and we get that they're best friends and they they sure they end up at at Dr. Heiter's house after getting lost their car they rented breaks down in the woods um not after they encounter first before they they find their way to the doctor's house they they their car breaks down and this dude pulls up that creepy German guy. Yeah, that's who, a weird. It's so weird, but I, I, he reminds me, um, so much of the hitchhiker in Texas Chainsaw. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he's this guy who like so our our main characters are are lost. Like their car breaks down in Texas Chainsaw. We've got the van running out of gas. Obviously, different timelines here a little bit, but, uh, so so their car breaks down, and then we have this guy who is of the world of the movie, you know, who approaches these outsiders, and immediately you know something is fucked up. Like this whole, they're not safe anywhere, you know. You're immediately, it's it, you're immediately put at such unease. And this guy is very, for me as a as a woman watching, as someone who has gone through life as a woman watching this, that guy felt so viscerally real to me and because he starts sexually harassing he does. He's in sex- German in German but they they get I mean he starts flicking his tongue and stuff and they get yeah. okay yeah and we have subtitles so we know what he's saying and it's disgusting but like that guy's so real to me mm-hmm. and I think that being the the peak of the sexual threat in this movie works for me because it doesn't feel like it resonates with me without making me f- like want to turn the movie off yeah you're like oh this has been there yes exactly it's so it's such a relatable unfortunately experience that these two girls have and i think it's interesting that the guy says something like oh you look like like two girls i've seen in my my porn movies like his 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 horny movies his horny movies that's right yeah his (laughs) His horny horny movies. movies and when I, I remember when I first saw this movie, it was this whole beginning sequence that actually like interested me the most because oh, yeah. it's almost yeah because you have the setup of these two girls who are who are lost and Tom Six has even said like I I purposely used horror cliches to start the movie because the rest of the movie is so not a horror like you you end up in this totally weird scenario that's not like anything you've seen before mm-hmm. but the beginning of it is they're too like they're kind of they're played to be really stupid they're yeah, ditzy they're pretty dumb. but the way that their their dialogue they they talk Valley Girl kind of they almost do feel like it almost feels like an intro to a porn especially when they go to <laughs> dr Hyder's house and they're like we're all wet can we come inside and use your phone it feels like you're about to watch a porn movie yeah hey, can we use your phone so we can call the car company service uh, are you alone yes we're alone come in and i think that that's interesting considering that this is the era of torture porn 2009 yeah yeah the uh, torture porn was probably getting a little long in the tooth by this yes. time but yes but i think it's appropriate that this movie almost bookends that yeah a movie that starts where it almost feels like a badly scripted porn <laughs> with these two girls and then it turns into definitely not a porn yeah um, and they are they are topless while they're in the human centipede, they are, yeah. but it's never shot in a no, titillating way. No, no, no. It is it is very um The nudity is like incidental. Yes. It's very it's very desexualized nudity, which I really appreciate and especially kind of learning about what it was like filming this. It seems like and again, this is why I have I have to give this movie points for as much as it has this reputation, it earns favor with me by the way that you know it, it sounds like filming this was pretty chill yeah um let me see i had i printed out an interview with some of the people in it uh let me see they when they were auditioning they all knew what they were getting into they said they're like mm-hmm. hey you're we are auditioning for this movie it's about we're selling people's butts people's mouths it was the it was the financial backers yes. who were not in the only people the not in the loop were the financial backers which i think is very very funny tom six was just like uh it's a horror movie about a guy who sews people together to get money and they're like sure that sounds good and then apparently didn't figure out the full extent of it until it was already done <sighs> love that i see that's <laughs> even just that makes me like 
I love it. I, that makes me like this movie. But yes, the actors auditioning for it were told yes. right up front what yes. they'd be getting into. They were told Lots of them left. what position in the centipede they would be in. They, Apparently some of them thought they were, uh, would be able to do it and then they like had to get into the position and, they, and tap that, out. That's when it freaked them out too mm-hmm. much. Yeah, but so everyone knew what was up. Okay, so one of the actresses, I think the, I want to say maybe the middle. What's her name? Um, so her last name's Yenny. She was the uh the back one. She is okay. So yeah. the the one in the back. I'm pretty sure. Uh, she says, uh, at the time I wasn't super comfortable with being shown in that way, so it was a really big challenge to say, okay, it's not a sexual thing. Dr. Hyder's creating this pet and you feel really sorry for the exposure that they're they're under. We were all three in it together. Uh, Aki, Ashley, and I. Aki is the front. Mm -hmm. The set was really professional and Tom and Ilona, who is Tom Six's sister and his producer, made sure you felt comfortable. There was a wardrobe lady who had robes and she'd throw them on us and if Aki got his robe before I got my robe, he'd give it to me so I wouldn't be standing there naked. And then I guess Dieter and when he's swimming, he wasn't supposed to be naked, but he just got naked too. That's the actor who plays the doctor. Yes, the doctor is swimming around. So he also was like, fuck it, I'm gonna get naked. Yeah, and I I liked his reasoning for that was because... You're not embarrassed to be naked around your pet. Yeah, and human (laughs) centipede's supposed to be his pet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's... Lucy knows. And you and I, I feel like it it's it's such an interesting way to do this where again, if it's the movie, maybe people think it is a nightmare version of this, if there is a nightmare version of Yeah, human he's centipede. probably having sex with that human centipede. Yeah, which I mean happens in Oh, is does that happen in yeah. the sequels? Okay. Which is why I'm like, I don't have I'm not as interested in like, that's not as interesting to me. What's so much more interesting is this totally desexualized, sterile, weird doctor who makes this pet and there's nothing sexual about it. I think the only thing he gets sexual pleasure from is when he's injecting people. Oh. Yeah, because he, he does give everyone rape drugs when they show up to his house. Yeah, he gives them Rofenol, roofies. Yep, so mm. when the two girls, their car... He's a roofie maniac. Oh, he's man. trying to he's roofie got... cops and yeah, shit. Yeah, he was. He's got, he went to Costco for his roofies. He's got a giant <laughs> got fucking so bottle many. of roofies. But... So yeah, those two girls show up and he he gives them roofies and they're they're feeling it and he tells them like I gave you roofies it's in the water that they they mm-hmm. drank and I'm tired what what's going on look at me what's the wrong? rape drive oh, God what what Rohypnol. oh my God what causes drowsiness dizziness disorientation oh. and memory loss. No. It's a horror movie, even we've seen a million times where I'm like, great, here comes like the rape scene, you know, but no, he just injects them with more drugs. To, but that's where the the quote unquote rape scene is, I think, is when he's injecting oh. them because it is very it's penetration and he is a little like, oh, uh, like he and then he kind of sits on the couch and just he has like, to chill out for a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, smoke a cigarette. So I think that's where the, the sex is in this movie, if there is any. And I think that that's really interesting. So, so I guess I guess just overall to summarize that little tangent, as someone who I'm very sensitive to sexual violence and horror, I tend to avoid it if I can. It's not my thing. I I appreciate this for being a movie that so frightens people and so disgusts people and is capable of doing that without any sexual violence, I think. It's great. Yeah, it sticks it, to its premise yeah. of I'm going to make a human centipede. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And we don't need to exploit actresses and make people feel. Yeah, and they were given massages oh, at yeah, the end of every shooting after, day. Yeah, because they're, they're all they're on their hands and knees. They the whole had time. a masseuse to give them all massages. So that yeah, that definitely wins points. Is that the actors all sound like they had a good time? The lead actor who played the evil German doctor mm-hmm. was it Dieter? Is it Laser? Dieter Laser. Dieter Laser, Hell which is an yeah, awesome dude. name. One, he does an amazing job. I think he's incredible he's in this. He's very, very good. Yeah. But it does sound like he stayed in character on that set. Did. And uh, apparently at one point accidentally hurt both the the Japanese actor, mm-hmm. I forget his name, who played the, the, the front segment yeah, of the Human Centipede. Yeah, I have centipede. their names here, but now I have all my pages mixed up. Yeah, because he had appeared in Heroes as well. It sounds like he was the yes. most experienced of the cast yeah katsuro the is the front that's the character's that's name that's the character's name katsuro yeah mm-hmm. and then uh i think he had also accidentally hurt 
the Jenny. Wom- no, the woman playing Lindsay. Oh, Lindsay the the, one, at the end, like the main one. Oh, is Lindsay in the middle? Lindsay's Lindsay in the is middle. in the middle. She's Jenny. Like the oh, that's right, because it's the Jenny tale. The Jenny tale. The Jenny sequence oh. has a problem with it. <laughs> I love the the nicknames he has for everyone in this. There, I like it's so. This movie is also very funny. I think it is in a fucked up way. It definitely has a dark humor to it. <laughs> yeah, it's <Yes>. um <laughs> very German, dry, uh, mm-hmm. European, which. I'm always, again, I'm a mark for. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say one of my favorite moments of like very subtle, very dark humor is when he uh, has to replace, because originally it's not Katsuro. What's, is that the name? Yeah. It's a different, it's a, it's truck, a truck driver. Yeah. But then he finds out that the truck driver is not a match. What His blood tissues type or don't tissue. match. Yeah, yeah. I think. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So he just euthanizes the truck driver and then. Uh, I, I think the subsequent scene of him just pulling Katsuro, is, is that the name of the character? Uh-huh. Okay, uh, out of the car, and then, yeah, he's just, like, dragging his unconscious by, and then you see the dart in his butt. Like, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Dieter Laser sells this character. You can tell he went 110%. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. And I guess we can talk about that character a little bit, because that character is... Is a Nazi doctor. Yeah, Dr. Joseph Heiter. Heiter. Yes. Which means cheerful in German. <laughs> Tom Six kind of... Who has mostly pretty much done this trilogy. Yeah, he has another movie coming out. Mm-hmm. But um, all his work prior to this one like doesn't have Wikipedia links. So I don't know if they were short films or just like... Yeah. I don't know what they were. Yeah. Probably indie films. But yeah, his... his filmography is pretty much he, the trilogy he is the um like quintessential european dude director who just wants to make fucked up shit and hates political correctness yeah he does <laughs> um which sometimes i can't, like sometimes that's the person's movie i want to watch you know <laughs> like just weirdo european guy making fucked up shit sure sure yeah but yeah so he a big part of of the decision to cast a german dude and make it make him such a nazi doctor is the idea of like cuz tom six is is from the netherlands so they kind of i think almost even work together coming up with this like being german and feeling haunted by that past and then also being dutch and being haunted by the invasion of the netherlands and stuff so there is a lot of like there's thought put into this movie. Sure. And then you throw in that the front segment of the human centipede is a Japanese man. Yes. Only and speaking Japanese in this, by Yes. The way. He does not speak English. He can't communicate yeah, with which either is a the great, doctor like, or the ladies. That's such a cool device, I think. There's some personal stuff going into this. There's some, um, you know, life experience, things that clearly resonate with both the director and this lead actor who is, like, putting that into this character and I think maybe that's what makes it, um, I think maybe what puts it a little bit above just kind of a trash movie to me is there's there's thought here. Like, this is a movie made with intention and care. Mm-hmm. And so when I look at something like this, where universally it's it's kind of a joke movie. Like, people, it's a punchline to jokes, Human Centipede. Yeah, there's a South Park episode. Yeah, there it. is. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a South Park episode about it. But when I when I think about other horror movies that we've talked about and just kind of the the history of horror getting overlooked and there being so many horror movies that are considered not worthy of analysis, especially slashers. Mm -hmm. I kind of put this in that category because it's, I think people would are even shocked at the idea of us trying to do an analytical episode about human centipede. It sounds crazy, but like it's worthy of being, critique it's worthy of being analyzed it's it's a piece of art made with intention whether or not you like it and it's well made it's like well shot and see i think it's competently shot okay uh because while watching it i was actively looking for this Mm -hmm. i was like i know that chelsea thinks it's really well made so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna be really paying attention to the cinematography here's my theory to you okay okay it's like I said, adequately shot. It's not poorly shot. It's not, you know, put the camera on sticks and just shoot it. There is a little bit of thought behind it. 
But I think that the production design or the the location of his house fools you into thinking maybe it's better shot interesting because that house is fucking cool it is and it's very cool it um it's an aesthetic i love in horror i think i think it's always really ballsy to like shoot somewhere where it's very light um and all the walls are white it it reminds me of american psycho it reminds me of christian bale's apartment in that and um you know I just always think that's an interesting choice because his home is like white walls and every once in a while you have like a piece of art on the wall or like a sculpture that's a dark color. But I, I OK, sure, I could I could see that where it, the, the location of it is so visually interesting that you think it's. Yeah, all the shots outside the house. Yeah, look really cool. But I'm wondering how much of that is just because that house looks really cool. Because it's like this right angle building. Mm -hmm. It's a building that, yeah, has a right angle to it. Uh, It's mostly a ranch, like one story, uh, except for like a little addition. But then he's got the basement, Mm -hmm. which is, yeah, it's all stark, clinical, white, like you said. Mm -hmm. And he's got the artwork hanging up of Siamese twins or conjoined twins. They call them Siamese twins here. But I guess that artwork was done by Tom Six. Yeah. Yeah. He like. Yeah. The creepy painting. (laughs) But then I don't know. You have to think about scenes where. So so leading up to like the surgery, everything is very. Yeah. We've got like straight on. Everything's very cold. It feels very clinical. Everything's kind of blue and icy feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cold. But I love. And this is where I think. No, I think there's some some there's a flair put on the the filmmaking or at least there's some there's thought there is then we cut to this is after surgery and dr heiter is putting on a fucking suit and i was laughing because it reminds me of like a nervous prom day in his suit waiting for his date to come down the stairs like that's the vibe (laughs) and then that's when his his new pet wakes up and everything in that scene is very warm it's very orange and lush and we're I think the camera's moving around a little bit more we're getting like gentle close-ups and sweeping shots over the sides of people's legs and arms and stuff that scene feels different to me which is why I think no I, I think they're there's intention in how they're shooting it. Okay. And I don't know if it's just the location. Like, there's color changes that are supposed to evoke they some did, kind of mood. Yeah, they did uh, take special care with the color grading. Yeah. Especially so. for that scene. It sticks out to me so much because it's such a funny... Like, it, it's a it's such a dark, funny moment. And, like, he's genuinely getting so gussied up because... He's like, I'm going to meet my my new pet. I got to look my best. Yeah. Yeah. It's like their brief moment of happiness while they're still like all on drugs before yeah. they realize, wow, this actually happened. Oh, man. Yeah. Horrific. Do you do you think the the horror aspect of it just as a horror film, do you think it's effective? Like, did you find yourself tense or scared or? I Yeah. To the extent that, like, when I tried to put myself in these characters' shoes, it was horrifying. Yeah. It's difficult to do that because the characters aren't great. No. It's hard to root for them, especially... That's my other thing with this movie, is I know that they're meant to be not the, like, brightest, but they're so dumb. There are some dumb choices made in this. There's too many dumb choices for me. There's, I mean, and it's... It's the same thing that's in so many horror movies where there's the victim running away or they get the the villain down and then just like run leave away the and weapon. leave the weapon Yeah, there. that happens in this. It's so frustrating and hard for me to be like, oh, I can relate to that person because the whole time I'm like, no, you idiot, do this. Yeah. But then, yeah, like I agree with that. And, there's, there's... Yeah, and so many horror movies have that. But like as characters though... I the guy in the front is so interesting because yeah, there's that language barrier mm-hmm. and he's alone. Like the yeah, two he's... girls have each other. Um, and I'll talk about their relationship too, because I like it a lot. But this poor guy you feel for so hard this whole time, especially since him and the doctor just because of the way that we are setting up this clear um commentary on world war ii and fascism and nazism we've got we've got katsuro yelling at him and calling him a crazy nazi like right off the bat 
Um, and then the doctor calling him kamikaze. Ka- kamikaze. He calls him kamikaze a bunch and yeah. all kinds of other racist stuff. But uh, I I think like their relationship too is really interesting and makes me care about him that much more. Like the scene that sticks out to me is when he's trying to teach it tricks in the backyard. Yeah, and he is is. This is is this after uh, Katsuro bites his leg, or is that later? I think that's before. <coughs> yeah, uh, I think the training is like the first. Oh, okay, big scene I see. With the pet. So he has a human centipede out in the backyard, and he like tosses a newspaper, and he says to go fetch it. And the newspaper is Die Welt. It's the world. It's a German newspaper. Is that an actual German uh-huh. newspaper? Okay, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Take the world and bring it to me. Yeah. Good boy. Bring me the world. That's mm-hmm. the trick he's trying to teach his human centipede. And I think it's purposeful. And I think it's a scene that to me makes this movie smarter than what people give it credit for is he's telling the, as we have a Nazi doctor telling the, the Japanese front of his human centipede to go bring him the world. I think they used the world purposefully. I think there's, I, I, I think it's, correct to assume that there's some level of allegory for the relationship between Germany and Japan in World War II. Mm -hmm. The idea of, I don't think Germany as an ally with Japan is viewing the Japanese on any sort of equal footing to their empire, but it's like a relationship of convenience here, go fetch, bring me the world, like win me the war. Yeah. Like does that does that make Absolutely. sense? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I you know it's it's I check because I also don't want to be, you know, because I'm I'm choosing to defend this movie. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be digging into it more than maybe it it deserves. But I think that that's a fair analysis of it. And yeah, because you have all the references to World War II, the Nazi, yes. the kamikaze thing. It's and, set up, mm-hmm, and, and I, then to ha- to have the world be the newspaper. I think that's a very astute right. observation. And I, I didn't catch it. You told me. Yeah, afterward. I think that that's. Interest, you know, I think that that's interesting. And I think that that's like a really like disturbing scene for that reason is because there's that subtext and the idea of like, you know, at, you know, you are going to bring me the world and you are going to be my ally, quote unquote. And as your reward, you get to be the front of the human centipede. You don't have to get <laughs> poop put in your mouth. Yes. Isn't that nice of me, <laughs> Germany? So, yeah. Yeah. That's a. Uh... That definitely goes a long way in making me almost appreciate the movie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, then let's talk about the other the other characters too. Our our, our middle and back of the centipede is the two girls because you said Jenny, you yeah. yeah again. There's there's dumb decisions made in this film that because Lindsay almost gets away. And mm-hmm. so here's mm-hmm. the thing: is uh, they're drugged after they get there. Brief plots. Yeah, these girls go out. For a night on the town, they get lost. The car breaks down. They wind up at his house, come in all wet. He roofies them. They wake up tied to medical beds. Okay, mm-hmm. they're like their hands are strapped there, and uh-huh. he start when he goes to start putting the general anesthesia into uh, Katsuro, and then I think Jenny is next, and then Lindsay gets out of her with, using her teeth. She mm-hmm. gets out of her straps, keeping her in place. One could have done that so long prior to that and when, I know, when he's explaining and, and they had woken up a previous time too like they've been oh in that yeah because remember the truck yeah they was see there originally. The, they see yeah yeah so because for me i wake up in that first thing i'm doing is trying to chew that sure. restraint off sure. and it turns out it was wasn't that hard to do she got it off in a couple of minutes once mm-hmm. she started trying so that that's the first thing that I'm like, Ugh. then she gets away. She gets out of the bed and like knocks him down and some way incapacitates him mm-hmm. and runs and hides into a room. And there's a bit of a chase scene and he ends up, I think the power goes out. And so I he's, love this chase scene though. Y- oh yeah. Cause it's in the, the pool. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. She, he like, she winds up in his indoor underground pool it's a cool it's room. pretty cool his yeah. little pool room mm-hmm. just a room devoted to having a pool in it and it i, I think it's a good scene because he has his trank gun trained on her and she tries to avoid him by going underwater for a long time but you know you can only do that for so long he closes it he closes the mechanical pool cover on her 
and it starts to like <laughs> trap her underneath the pool, and then the power goes out. And this was a real, really funny moment. To yeah, me. he's a like genuine laugh. He's like, "Sorry, I gotta go take care of this." Like his sorry to her. <laughs> it was is super sorry. Funny. Like this is part of the they're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, he's loving it. Ah, shit. The overdose cut off again. Sorry. Shy set. I think that chase scene is great. Like that's like a tense good chase scene especially since oh it's one of i I, uh, I forgot this happened in this what when she gets out of the bed yes it, that i hate sucks. it it's like one of the <laughs> grossest things and i oh just thinking about it when she when she hops out of bed uh, and runs away she has like an, IV, has an IV, IV in her arm and, and when it, you get a close-up of it tearing out of her arm and oh fuck it's disgusting ah. i hate it as you know i i think that's the grossest thing in this movie uh, he squeezes pus out of jenny's little <laughs> infected pretty wound. that's pretty gross too yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as you know as someone who's been to the hospital had a few operate that's always like the biggest nightmare is you have this id iv in you uh, and you're like what if it got torn out and you see disgusting. a close-up of it happen here and it's fucking gross yep but then she ends up going back while he's gone and trying to rescue jenny who's mm-hmm. been put under the general anesthesia i do like that while she's rescuing she jenny, whispers sorry yeah to because yeah. it's like i can't help you yeah i like how they skip over her dragging her up the stairs we'll just pretend that was really simple yeah but yeah and then she's trying to drag her friend out of there i don't know it's just one of those things where it's like how are you not more looking around for this dude you know he's around mm-hmm. and he ends up tranking her and after she breaks her... out of the she like breaks the glass no he broke the glass or i'm sorry he breaks it yeah she had locked herself in a room but yeah she like drags her out of that window yeah, and then they get both get tranked again in the backyard yeah, yeah. And that's the end of her almost escape yeah but i i like those characters relationships with each other enough to kind of like for me i for me i like everything else enough to kind of ignore or or tolerate the dumb mm-hmm. decisions they're all making because i i think even just probably because they're f- like the actors are are forced to be so intimate with each other all three of them even but especially the two girls that like you buy that they're best friends and there's so many moments in this where they're like holding each other's hand yeah and i like those moments the nonverbal acting is like I mean, they're it's forced nonverbal acting, but like it's like they do such a good job of of I like you feel for them. And yeah, I think it's like a good like because their know. first few scenes getting ready to go out and everything, or like after they get lost, it's not the best. No. Especially I was laughing at the dialogue while they're going around in the woods because they say each other's names <laughs> every single sentence. Jenny, Lindsay. Like, we needed to go find help, Jenny. Seriously, find help? How are we gonna find help out here, Lindsay? Will you agree to come along, Jenny? This is not just my fault. Jenny, we just broke down. I know, Lindsay, but we have to go find help. Well, Jenny, we could have stayed in the car. It's like, nobody talks that way. Yeah. But, yeah, when they're in the human centipede, they sell the hell out of that. They do, They're very good in the, like you said, nonverbal acting and just getting that terror apart. And they can't even really scream. Mm -hmm. They're like muffled noises. They have to act with their eyes. And so, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I think like, I wish, um, like I want those actresses to know they did a really good job and the actor too. I think he's so good. Yeah. I guess he improvised a lot of that dialogue, the screaming during the, I think the scene where he's having his surgery explained to him, Mm -hmm. he's improvising on set and just yelling at Dieter (laughs) while he's doing his little slideshow. Um, but yeah, I think he really sells too. Like, that he rage. has yeah rage and this this camaraderie up to a point with the two girls and the human centipede and yeah because he's, he's kind of counting when they're walking and he's going eat mm-hmm. she knee and they, they're like trying to crawl up the stairs i like that i love that and that whole chase at the end chase they're all crawling <laughs> on the floor which is great yeah uh yeah because he seems kind of prickly at first when they first get him and he, he kind of just ignores the girls he yeah. just directs all of his rage uh, towards the doctor but i think the first time that you really have s- that interaction is when he has to go to the bathroom and he does say i'm sorry yeah when he's like forced to do that i think i think you're right that is like the turning point when he starts to like form a relation because he, he has to do that to them 
And then he, I think maybe he feels compelled to like, all right, we got to get out of this together. Yeah. And you I, know? yeah, you're right. At the end when they're working together to try to crawl out of there, they're trying. And that's when they're going up the stairs. Ooh, and I it's, know. So it's so painful. Gross, yeah. Cause like I said, they're going up the stairs. And so they're starting like Jenny in the back is dying of illness. Yeah. And so she's lagging behind and they're like stretching it's apart gross, yeah. and there's blood coming out and oh, it's dark blood. And he's like, is that poop or blood? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ugh, oh, it's, oh, so, it's gross. so gross. Yeah. So, um, so between that, the squeezing the pus out of the infection and the IV getting ripped out, those are the grossest moments. Yes. Oh, and cutting into the, the surgery. butt for the surgery. Yeah, you do see. It reminded me of the the autopsy and saw four. Yeah, because he cuts deep into. It's, it's clinical gore mm-hmm. is how Which is, I would. For me, I think the worst. Yes, stuff. me too. Because it's, it's so real. It's extreme, yeah. Because it's, it's so realistic and so... Um, like, yeah, it's so cold. Oh, yeah. That fourth saw just opens with like a 10 minute long yeah. gross ass autopsy scene. But yeah, yeah there, you, you see some of the surgery um, that he's doing to make his pet. He cuts deep into those butt cheeks it's and then gross, rip, like yeah. takes the, the flesh out and you see the, because yeah. what he has to cut little triangle pieces into the butt cheek and then attach and sew them in, into the cheek yeah into the mouth so it's like skin being like grafted um, yeah it's gross. oh boy yeah you're not seeing like buttholes or anything it's like side no. view of butt cheeks there are but no it's buttholes, really gross yeah. uh the the scene where he and i think this is some of the most effective horror and i purposely so it's the scene that tom six talks a lot about when he does interviews is uh the scene where where the doctor's explaining to the three of them what he's going to do to them. Because mm-hmm. at, at that point, they all wake up and they have no idea. Like, they're all just hooked up to IVs in these beds. They don't know what he's going to do to them. Yeah, they, they didn't see the movie title. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we start with cutting the ligamentum patella, the ligaments of the kneecaps. So, knee extension. <laughs> Is no longer possible. And that's when he puts the little like overhead, like the projector. Yeah, yeah, he puts the overhead projector on and puts his little drawing down of the human centipede. And he talks about how he previously had made one out of his three Rottweilers in the most poorly photoshopped <laughs> image so I've ever funny. seen. <laughs> Because, yeah, the movie begins with it. Oh, t- the movie begins with him, like, looking at a picture of his friggin... His Mein Lieber Dry Hund. Is that my sweet three dog? Yeah, his yeah, his beloved three dog. I don't know how else to translate <laughs> just, just that. Just fucking someone photoshopped three wa- Rottweilers standing, standing a little too close to each, to each other. other. <laughs> yeah. So he... And then, yeah, he takes, a, like, a few solid minutes to explain... This is what I'm going to do to you. And has drawings and little pictures. In and very clinical terms. Yes. And he says the word mucinous or mucus. He's, mucus is said a lot. Yeah. It's gross. Yeah. Using very yeah, medical terms. Very clinical. And Tom Six said that that's purposeful. He finds like being operated on terrifying and having operations explained to you terrifying, which is terrifying. It is. They're like, okay, we're going to cut we, into your chest. We've both had like operations of some capacity done to, did they explain when you had your like nose and throat up? Did, did they like, yeah, they're like going to stick whole... a searing hot thing into my nose and burn away some cartri- yeah. cartilage or whatever. It's, and I thought of when I had my eye surgery, because you were there for <laughs> yeah. that too, where they gave me like Xanax. And as I'm sitting there, like just chilling out on Xanax, they bring in, they brought in an iPad and they just hit play on it. And it was a video that was like, this is what we're doing today. Like I already knew, but I think maybe they have to show it to you again. So you know, like this is what you're here for today. Mm-hmm. And it was a whole little animation and narrated video that was like, all the specifics about what was about to be done to my eyeballs while I was awake. And it's fucking terrifying. (laughs) Oh, there was one shot when Lindsay was dragging Jenny out uh, in her near escape that I thought was interesting. It's shot from behind as she's pulling her out of that broken (gasps) window. I wrote that down too. Yeah, because the way that uh, Jenny's arms are out 
and then it's she's in front of Lindsay and we're we're shooting it yeah from behind. so think of if you're doing a trust exercise and sure. someone falls and you catch them that's how she's dragging yeah so Jenny. the unconscious Jenny's arms are out yeah and Lindsay's dragging her and from behind it looks like a single entity with six yep. limbs and I thought that was pretty cool I wrote that down too I wrote that down as like a shot that I really liked see that's why I think like it's we're shooting stuff with sure. purpose in this, it's, dude. I, it's definitely not poorly shot. Yeah. Okay, it's it's well shot. <laughs> There's that shot of that the grossest fucking steak I have ever seen. Ew, it's I so eat steak nasty. at least once a week. It's a problem of mine. I love my red meat. It'll probably kill me, but I would not touch that steak with and a it's ten bleeding. foot pole. Like he's it's, yeah, I like him bloody, but that thing is fucking gross. It doesn't look like a steak. I know. I don't know what it looks like to me. I don't know. It's somehow both it like bleeding a and gray. <laughs> yeah. Like it looks over it's and disgusting. undercooked, and it just has fat all up in it. It's fucking gross. Yeah. That's in the scene when Katsuro bites him on the heel. Yeah. Because he says, "I will not be your pet." Yeah, and he bites bites his heel, and that. That's the scene after that is when uh, we have Dr. Heider with his bad Nazi boots yeah, on. He's like, like, bite me. Go and bite, bite me. Bite my Nazi boots. Yeah. There is, I thought it was interesting that there's a scene where he does, he punishes the human centipede because it tries to run away. It, The three people in the human centipede <laughs> try to run away. Oh, when he's swimming? Run away. And they, they try, try to, to crawl, crawl away. away. And, and that's just an off-screen beating. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you just hear like the yells. But and... I, I think it's, again... That happens off screen. Mm-hmm. If if we're making just a straight up torture porn where we're being gross just to be gross or like exploitive just to be exploitive, we would see that. At one point, it's during that scene with the Nazi boots and when Katsuro has to poo for the first time, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Laser or whatever fucking does his, his own chicken dance. Yeah. Arrested development style, man. I don't I don't think I could recreate it. I'll no, just put it in it's the clip. Fascinating. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Kamikaze is a chicken today. So the end involves a couple of cops who show up. That's right. These like very German looking cops. Is that, that how up. cops look in German? Because they I don't look, know. They just look like German dudes. They to look me. like they're they uh, carpooled together to a Steve Bannon lookalike con- yes, contest. Yes, they both look like Steve Bannon. It's so weird. Yeah, they're just like these schlubby guys with gray hair. They have less <laughs> alcohol flush than Steve Bannon. <laughs> That's <so>. true. <laughs> the their noses aren't quite as red. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Those cops both die too. <laughs> Everyone dies except Lindsay. Who whose fate She's is left stuck in the middle? I, like I think she think, survives. I like to think that you know the police station knows these cops are going there. When yeah, they that's don't what I think back. happens. I think fingers crossed. I for think Lindsay. she lives because yeah, that's yeah. The police are gonna notice those that two dudes two of their are missing, and they know where missing. they went. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole end of this is like. He's not a good, like, Dr. Hyder's not a great criminal. No, like, he's like, bad. He drops his fucking needle. He does, he's, full he's, of roofies. He's going to roofie the cops with a needle under a towel, and he drops it, and they see the, the needle. And they're like, hey, what's that? And he's like, uh, insulin. And, <laughs> and they're like, okay, we're going to go get we're a warrant. We're getting a warrant. We'll be back in, like, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, he's an, It's kind he's of hilarious. Idiot. Yeah, he's not a, which I think is a fun choice. No, yeah, To make great. him, like, he's a good, he's a great, quote, unquote, scientist allegedly but mm-hmm. like he's a shit criminal which i think is kind of fun um and yeah i wonder how many people up to that point have gone missing i think maybe it has just been the four because i think this is his first try at doing it oh yeah after the dog yeah i think this is yeah his so first but <laughs> so he immediately just gets caught yeah because he was uh this is after jenny gets infected she's the one in the back <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh she's not healing correctly so she's going to die and so he decides that with these two cops all up in his business oh sure i'll just knock these cops out well and remove two jenny and we'll have a quad centipede hell yeah it'll be great yeah so in, what does he say enjoy your time with the jenny tail while it lasts <laughs> yeah i love your final the jenny moments. tail is so funny to me but then he goes to roofie the cops with his old roofie in the water trick which that, like yeah maybe get something with flavor i don't know if roofies have a taste i don't probably think they not. do that's yeah i think the they're that's the point is they're they're tasteless but, but still the water might look a little i love that just, that's his move though it's yeah, like would water. you like some water and drink it 
drink really it. Really forcing it on these cops. He's like, okay, you can leave to go get a warrant after you finish your drink, water. Drink, drink. It's sloshing <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, he's bad at this. <laughs> he's very bad. <laughs> But he uh, kills them both. He does, yeah. They because they're they're chasing him. It's that pool. I think that pool is like that room must be in such a corner where if you're moving real fast and and you don't turn quite right, you just fall into that pool. You like go right through that door and then just fall into that pool because mm-hmm. it gets three people in this movie. Yeah, just go flying into that pool. <laughs> Yeah, so they both uh, he he shoots them both, but not or before no, he's, he. I think what happens with the first one because we don't see it; it's off screen. Yeah, that's I right. think he actually got roofied a bit and falls victim to it, and then he has the scalpel in his back. Yes, w- when his body's in the pool, and then the other cop comes in and uh, Doctor Hyder has taken the has first cop's, the cop's gun, gun, shoots the second cop, who then shoots him in the head. Yeah, killing him. Yeah, and so yeah, the and the sequel. Uh, doesn't have the doctor, obviously, no, he's it's dead. Meta. And yeah, I was going to say we don't get to find out what happened to Lindsay because the sequel is apparently about a guy who watched the human centipede. And the third movie is about, is about someone watching the second one. I yeah. Think. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It, that's fun, I guess. Uh, fun. Dieter, uh Dieter Laser is in the third one. He is, as apparently a fucked up real abhorrent character. Yeah. I don't know if I, he's. Now I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna be curious. He's castrating prisoners. Oh, They're Jesus eating Christ. clitorises. I don't know, oh, man. man. It, it's fucking yeah. Just reading. See, that. that's when I'm like, I don't want like, you know. It's real fucked up. There's a difference between this and that movie. Yeah. Oh. Um, I do want to talk about the uh, Katsuro and how he goes because I think that that's, that's right. Interesting. Um. So after, during the whole kerfuffle with the cops, that's when the human centipede decides to try to make, make a, a run for, for it. it yeah. So first they they hide, and when the doctor comes to look for him, uh, Katsuro stabs him in the foot with the scalpel, and then like the leg, mm-hmm. and it gets him to the point where he's crawling around. Yeah, so everyone's just crawling around. Yeah. Unfortunately, he leaves the scalpel behind, yeah, which is that's very it. annoying. Yeah, that's it. He leaves the scalpel in Dr. Heiter's leg, which we were both yelling at the TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the human centipede makes it up the stairs, which again is one of the most painful scenes to watch. Yeah. And then they try to make it out that broken window, but it's been replaced. Yes, which I love that payoff. A lot because the window was broken earlier when Dr. Heider was chasing uh, Lindsay. Lindsay, dragging Jenny around. So he breaks through that window and we see later there's guys coming over to replace that window. That's pane. the awkward prom uh, shot. Yeah. Of him in the tux. And I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's such a uh, kind of a devastating choice to like show you that that window has been put back in because the end when you realize, oh, my God, she's. She's directing the front of the centipede to go to that bedroom because she thinks that window is still missing. That hurts. And the drapes man. are closed, so they get all the yeah. way out to and it. You and know, then... you already know that that yeah. window's there. I think that that's, that's good. yeah. I I think it was a, it was a good choice to show you that that window was put back because it just hurts so hard when they get in there and you're just like you're watching them crawl to it too. It's happening slow, so you have so much time to just be like, no. Yeah. And so when, when yeah, they get backed into a corner essentially and, and Katsuro realizes there's no way out and he he kind of he he has this monologue where he admits that in life he he's been a bad person. He like abandoned his family. Ab- yeah. Like ha- I think had a kid that he's a bad dad to. Um and he kind of comes to like he believes that this is his punishment. Um, but he I, the way I interpreted it, at least, is he still wants to go out like feeling like a man, you know, like I think he's recognized like this was his punishment. I at least want to retain some kind of humanity and go out on my own terms rather than dying as part of a human centipede or dying at the hands of the person who did it to me. And so or he, continuing to live on. As or yeah, or, or yeah, exactly. Or like forcing himself to live as someone else's pet. Mm-hmm. Um, so he picks up a shard of glass from the, I think d- he had been beaten on the window. With yeah. The so there's yeah, glass yeah. everywhere. So he picks up a shard of glass and like, Oh, it's nasty. He, he cuts his, th- it's not a clean, uh, yeah. not a clean death. Yeah. And that also ties into, uh, I, I don't know enough to say, but I feel like at least popular 
depiction of Japanese I honor society. I was going to bring that up, but right? again, that's not something I know a ton about. And I'm, yeah. I'm worried that some of that is that a stereotype. Right. I think, but I think that that's, there is like, that's, that happened. That's historical, but I also don't know enough about that to speak to to whether it's an in, you know exactly. an interesting take on, is that a, a productive take on that is that a <laughs> yeah i have no dignified idea. take on that does but it, i'm assuming the reason that happens is tied into to that allegory that we were talking about that like world war ii allegory just just the notion of that culture and like sure. the honorable suicide uh yeah. what's it called because i know i know like the harikiri p- I think that's the pejorative term for it, right? Like uh, Harry Carey or whatever. Yes, that sounds right. Again, we clearly don't know what we're talking about. No. But I'm just, uh, just so we didn't show that we didn't miss it entirely. I yeah, feel like I, I get that, that. That yeah, I'm, I'm sure if, yeah, I think it was good to address it. But if anyone has any actual like productive Please. interpretation of that, let us know mm-hmm. if we are, um like using the totally incorrect terminology for that Which also was, i'm we sure are. we like i <laughs> yeah i i yeah i don't know much about that at all yeah how are you feeling after talking about it you know you moved the needle <laughs> <laughs> you did uh-huh it's uh so i've watched this movie twice now i i let's say this i won't say that i'll never watch it again okay it's not that bad mm-hmm uh, and I think that the things you pointed out are interesting and do show that this movie is, it's yes, it's not just a movie made solely for the purpose of grossing everyone yeah. out. It does have some thought behind it. I wouldn't put it in my top five. I don't even know if I put it in my top ten. Um, oh my God, I'm surprised you're saying it's even, you know, near those. I mean, I I think... There's something about it. And I think maybe it also is is creeping up there just because of the association I have with it with the podcast as it's been like such a weird little runner in my mm-hmm. life. So there's that too. But sure. like I think what I think my goal for this was to at least kind of get it out there that this is a movie that I think deserves more than it was given. Um in pop culture and by critics in general, this famously got a zero star review from Roger Ebert. No, it actually got a no star review. Oh, that's right. He did. That's Separate. right. He said this, this movie exists in where a place stars where stars don't, don't shine. shine. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so it <laughs> no stars. That's right. I, which I didn't read his full review of it, Roger Ebert's, but oh yeah, it's, the little, the line I read with that sounded more positive than I expected. Cause he's like, is it good? Is it bad? It doesn't his matter. His review of it is, is very good reading um finally when i was looking at tom six's twitter he retweeted it and it was a retweet where someone was like this is a really good review of 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 it so it's yeah yeah i think i think this movie deserves more credit than it gets i don't know if i could say the same about the second and third one i haven't seen them but also they seem to be edging towards that like I, I would meet, loop them in with like Serbian film and shit like that, where it's like, mm. those are, I've never seen that either. And I don't want to, you yeah, know, I've never seen that where it's just like, what are we doing? You know what I wrote down is it kind of feels like this movie was inevitable in retrospect. Uh-huh. It, it almost feels like we always had to have made this movie at some point. I don't know why I, you know what I can, I, I was thinking along those same lines earlier. Um, speaking of my my comparison to Texas Chainsaw Massacre in, in a few ways. One, because it's a movie that has such a reputation when you don't actually see that much. Especially you don't see that much concerning the titular human centipede. The mm-hmm. human centipede itself is not that gross. The concept of it is disgusting, but looking at it, looking at it is fine. It's when chill. they're going up the stairs, I mean, that's man. gross. But <laughs> two, you have the the character that I think is a great parallel to the hitchhiker in Texas Chainsaw. Just this weird, like you know something. You're in the world of this movie. Yeah, now. the tone setting. Um, three, it is a movie where, like Texas Chainsaw, we talked about about that a bit on that episode, where it's like. 
the inevitability of when a society collapses, um, that idea of like resorting to cannibalism because it's the last like cannibalism is like a universal signifier of this is a society on its last legs and, mm-hmm. and it's a society eating itself and it's cannibalism is we it's like one of the human universals where we all recognize it's wrong. What's another human universal that we all recognize is wrong? It's eating our poop. Eating dude. poop. It's eating poop. Coprophagia. We, we all like that's another, and I'm I'm dead serious, but I, it's like it's another signifier of like this is this is it. We we're at the end. We're eating yeah. poop. We're eating each other. So I I think that maybe ties a bit into like your feeling that this was inevitable, but not knowing how to explain it's like yeah it is it feels like such an end point because we all as people know that that's wrong is eating poop (laughs) yep it's one of like we can all agree don't eat poop don't eat other people you know yeah does that make sense yeah that totally makes sense in like a weird anthropological way Mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of what the other and then like is it incest is like one of the big incest i'd say like like culturally like and there are exceptions for all these yes there are but like yeah, I think, and again, I took one anthropology class. So I'm <laughs> appropriately, I'm talking out of my ass, but I think there's like and, those. And I'm just eating the words that you're yes, saying exactly. and also pooping them out. Yeah. <laughs> pooping back and forth. Um, oh, yeah. What if you did? Oh, wait. No, I guess that wouldn't work. I was thinking like a circle, but you have to have an endpoint for food somehow. Right. Hmm. I'm gonna think on that. So that's uh, that's human centipede. That's it was human centipede. Kind of an all over the map discussion, but it I was... like it more when we don't go beat by beat. Yeah, you know? I think especially for this too. Yeah, because I it's a simple plot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess will I kill count it? I don't know. Enough people die in it, but then I'd have to watch the second and third one. Yeah. So let's put that. God, in. I mean, if not. you're worried about your videos getting flagged. Good luck with yeah, because even, even even when it's not to nudity, do that. yeah, I feel like YouTube would take one look at that human centipede and be like, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. But at least they have our thoughts on it here. Mm-hmm. That was fun. I liked talking about that. That movie. was fun. Good job, hon. Yeah, I'm glad I, I at least moved the moved the needle, like you said. Yeah. Let us know what you think. If you think I'm I'm full of it. Or you you had your mind changed. I don't know. Yeah, or if we didn't address a big complaint that you have, because I feel like this was mostly positive. I put up some yeah, I, criticisms, I, but yeah, I railroaded this episode. <laughs> That's fair to say. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Let us know your thoughts. Let's have like a cool, uh, productive discussion about Human Centipede, a movie that doesn't ever have cool productive discussions yeah. about itself like Make let's do happen. it yeah new frontiers <laughs> <laughs> great uh next week we don't know what's gonna happen but you'll know soon enough mm-hmm. in the meantime you can follow dead meat on social media at dead meat james on twitter and instagram and i'm at carebeck c-r-e-v-e-c-c on twitter and instagram and if you want merch deadmeatstore.com hell yeah also don't forget our first dead meat live show oh, is yeah. at rtx in austin texas on sunday july 7th, 7th. yes mm-hmm. uh link to where you can get tickets or is in the description yeah, I'll put here it in the description it's mm-hmm. gonna be fun i for now i want to i'm i want to do a game show type show i'll have more details about it later as i keep developing it but i want to do something with with interaction and... with the audience yeah so it'll you, be a lot of you fun. can make it there you can be part of the show yeah. it'll be a lot of fun yeah. and uh, people have been asking me will it be recorded and released as a podcast for the people who can't make it I, I think because enough people have asked, I'll try. Okay, we'll try. This is our first live show. We don't yes. know the technical aspects that go into that. No, so. I think I can I can get something done. But yeah, it's just on top of, of, of trying to get it recorded. It's just, oh my God, I have to plan a live show, which is a totally different beast than yeah. anything like this. So. It'll be fun though. It will. I'm, and I'm excited. And we hope to see you there. Mm-hmm. But until all that, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>